all hear me? I'm hoping that's a no. yes. Okay, no. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, awesome. So um, it's a, a very cold day in Seattle today. You know, ice whips, it's 30 degrees, and we might get snow tonight, and no one really knows what to do with themselves. So um, it's it's going to be a cold, chilly day. But I'm, I'm really excited to uh, welcome this session today. As most of you know, this is a, a passion I've had around building women as a team, as a community, and supporting each other. Um, I recently presented at the Microsoft Women's Conference in New York, and it was an amazing experience. We sold out. There was over 400 attendees. Next time, we're going to have to get a, a bigger room for it. Um, I also hosted a whole lot of round tables, and you know, it was interesting. I, I hosted six round tables, and in each of the round tables, there was common themes that came up. And you know, um, one was how do I find the right mentors, and how do I use different types of mentors? It was, and probably focused on, on me. It was how do you find international roles? You know, what's the approach you take to do different jobs around the world? It was, um, how do I give and receive feedback in the most appropriate manner? And how do I effectively build my career plan? And you know, those were the four topics that kept on coming up. And so I think we'll think about how we can build those into some of the next conversations that we have and the next presentations. And maybe it's something that I can speak on over over the next few months as we as we move forward but it was um, it was a great experience and um, it was it was really interesting to support all of the women and their career plans um, that we have um the other thing I wanted to say was you know we have this great LinkedIn community that we've built we we have a couple hundred people on it now, which is just phenomenal. And I do encourage all of you to, to use this group. You know, post comments, ask for feedback, load up suggestions. We're a community of women who, as a result of joining this group, are here to support each other and help build each other. Um, so I, I encourage you again to, to use to use the network that we're building, to leverage the network uh, that we have. and people looking for roles, looking for people who are looking for roles. Um, you know, we are also very interested in the next topics that you'd like to hear um, us present on. So email me or Jody or Sarah um, or post it on our site and um, we're very interested in your in your feedback. I'd also just like to thank all of the wonderful ladies who attended our women's lunch in San Diego at the Industry Summit. I know we had some great speakers um, and we're going to be posting some of the snippets of that event on our LinkedIn site for those of you who missed out having a look um, and, and attending it. And so um, with that, I would like to hand over to Sally Frank, who's going to introduce our speaker today. Um, and thank you for hopping online. And again, we look forward to your feedback and get engaged and, um, and connect with everyone online. So over to you, Sally. Thank you, Lindsay. And thanks, everyone, for joining today. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, great. OK, then we can proceed. So um, today we're going to focus on um, stress management and especially during the holiday seasons as women we get pulled in many, many different directions. And so I'm really honored to present our speaker today, Sari Weston. And I've known Sari for about five years. She's one of my primary yoga teachers and um, I'll give you her bio, but it's probably most important for you to know that uh, she helps keep me sane when things get really out of hand. <laughs> so um, Sari is the studio director of a yoga studio called The Bindu um, outside Charlotte, North Carolina. She is one of the most experienced yoga teachers in our areas, and she's known for her warm, empowering presence and her deep understanding of body alignment and the therapeutic, therapeutic applications of yoga for stress management and optimal health. She uses the techniques of, of yoga to support good self-care and stimulate healing processes in both the body and the mind. She teaches uh, public yoga classes. She teaches other teachers. Um, she does workshops and private one-on-one -on -one sessions. And 
All of this is informed by her own um, experience as a professional in the um, toxicology uh, industry. She was a consultant in that industry, and she traveled coast to coast and um, really understands the challenges that we have as uh, business ladies and what it means to try and balance all the things in your life and uh, do it in a way that is um, less, as, as least stressful as possible. Um, she is often sought out at a workshop leader and panelists on stress management and frequently co-presents with health practitioners and counselors. So, um, and, and uh, that quote of hers um, from um, <laughs> Mary Oliver is, is, is one that uh, she shared with me quite some time ago, and I, I keep coming back to it. So hopefully it will have the same meaning and resonance for you. Hmm. So I'm going to turn things over to Sari. Thank you, Sally, and thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here with you all. Um, I actually used to live in Portland, Oregon, Lindsay, so your description of the cold and oncoming snow tonight made me nostalgic for those very, very dark early Decembers I spent in Portland. Um, and here in North Carolina, as Sally said, I teach yoga now, so my life is much different from when I was traveling coast to coast and internationally, but I totally appreciate and remember um, the busyness, and now I have just a different level of busyness in my life um, with the things that I do. So this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm Italian. I come from an Italian family with a tradition of totally overdoing the holidays and <laughs> trying to do too much too fast and all the time. Um, and I reflect all the time at this time of year about how uh, we can only just turn on your car radio or walk into a store and you're just bombarded with messages um, about the holidays and just how wonderful this time of year is. You know that song, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, but in fact, many of us might describe this, this time of year as being the most stressful time of year. Um, the National Alliance on Mental Illness says that 64% of the people that they surveyed said they're affected by some form of the holiday blues, and 24% of those folks say the holidays affect them a lot. Um, the holiday stress, the good news is that it's situational and it's over <laughs> in January. Um, however, a lot of times what we're feeling is an exacerbation of already existing stress. So it's really important to handle um, these just strategies that we need to develop in order to be able to be more present and to enjoy this time together with our families and just be productive so that we don't have um, lingering feelings of those holiday blues um, past the time that the eggnog is sitting in the back of your fridge. So um, on September 30th this year, I took a picture and I was in a home improvement store and it was not even October yet, and they already had their display of Christmas trees out. Um, and I thought about how just rapid the pace is and how soon and quickly it picks up. Um, it seems like every year it's a little bit earlier. My mother and I always had a word for that, for that feeling that we had, which was um, the word twirly. And we always said that we felt like the whole world was just revolving faster and faster around us. And it's almost like being sort of a figure skater in the middle of the ice, just spinning faster and faster. Um, and to make matters even more stressful, now we have social media as a way of remembering and noticing who's ahead in the race <laughs> to get everything done and and where we all are. So it isn't just that we're trying to keep up with the Joneses next door and our decorations and all the things that we have to do, but now we have every Jones in our social network as well. So the momentum just gets, um, can be overwhelming. And that combined with work schedules and responsibilities to our families and all of the other things that we're doing in our lives that are normal parts of our life um, can just serve to make us feel somewhat stressed out. But this isn't to say that the holidays are all just a big stressor. And there are really beautiful opportunities this time of year to connect with our loved ones and to give and receive and to just enjoy a lot of lively fun. Um, and in fact, many people do report positive feelings like happiness and love and connectedness. And so what mindfulness does for us 
is helping us stay really present to that beauty of the season, to all the good things that are there. Um, and we do that by making smart choices about where we place our energy, which is precious. And so how does a figure skater stay upright and balanced even in the middle of a fast spin? She draws her arms and legs in very tight to her core. And that's like making choices that support your highest, your core, the things that are important to you so that you can enjoy all the wonderful things about the year without feeling pulled off balance. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, this webinar is going to be um, an alternation of various practices um, devoted to increasing mindfulness and awareness and relaxation and also some reflection and just discussion of the sources of stress for each of us. Um, and we'll talk through some practical and mindfulness strategies for how to manage that stress. So as we prepare to have this time together, um, let's just take a few moments to get centered and to get relaxed. And so if you'll put down any pens you're holding in your hands or to the extent that you're able to silence your devices or just get into a place where you can be comfortable and just make sure you're very comfortable in your seat. And <clears throat> if you need to make any adjustment to your sitting position so that you can sit with a long spine and feel like you're supported sitting upright, just please do so. Make yourself very comfortable. And then just let your eyes settle closed. And just take in a few nice deep breaths through your nose. And just let yourself really be here to feel the breath. You can start by just noticing the temperature of the air right at the tip of your nose as it's coming in. And then notice the temperature of the air as you're breathing out fully in a smooth stream. And just for the next few breaths, breathe just like that. Notice the temperature of the air on your inhale. And then notice the temperature of the air on your exhale. Let yourself settle a little more fully into your seat. Feel the weight of your body just supported by the floor and the seat. Just continuing with a deep and steady breath. In through your nose and out through your nose. Notice how the air is cooler as you breathe in and then warmer as you breathe out. With each breath, just allow yourself to become more relaxed. At the same time, just being aware of all that is around you and just letting it be while you focus on your breath. And now with each exhalation, try to make your exhale just one second longer each time. Without forcing without trying to overextend yourself, just invite your exhale to draw out longer. And just notice how that feels in your body. Let your skin soften. Let your face relax. Let your hands relax. Let everything go. Now just take a moment to notice how you feel. And just know that you can hold on to that feeling of relaxation as you slowly lift your chin and very slowly open your eyes. Very good. 
So that is just a simple way in the middle of the day that you can pause for a few moments and just connect with your breath. It helps me a lot, especially um, during times that I feel very busy, to simply try to lengthen my exhalation, just like we just did. It's very relaxing for your nervous system. So now that we're all relaxed and centered, um, I want to turn the discussion to just sources of holiday stress. And there are some common stressors that many of us experience, but this is a very individual um, thing. And so <laughs> sure. I just saw the message from Sarah, sure is. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to say that um, it is very individual. And I'll just open the discussion by talking about what the main stressors are for me. But I would love for this to be interactive and to hear from all of you about what particularly um, tends to wig you out during this time of year. So we can talk through it together and come up with some strategies room. on the chat in the chat room. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, so if you have some stressors you want to share, just go ahead and put in the chat. I'm sure you'll get lots of other people chiming in as well. Yes, we'll probably all find that a lot of them are very similar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so for myself, I will say that um, one of the main sources of stress for me is I grew up in a really lovely, wonderful, loving family, and we had almost perfect holidays. And so as a woman now out on my own trying to um, recreate the perfect holidays of my youth, which is a form of perfectionism that causes a lot of um, what I do during the holidays. And there's also emotional stress during the holidays. We all know that we can get stirred up a lot, um, tending to have to look at things differently during the year if you have experienced a major life change. Um, I got divorced a few years ago, and I will say my holidays look a lot different now than they used to, and um, so dealing with the expectations versus what they are. I'm looking at a lot of things like making it special for the kids, finding the perfect gift, Christmas cards. Oh, I have a big thing to say about Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> There can also be, um, how about breakdown of self-care? If anybody notices that they just don't have time to take care of themselves, their health, their nutrition, their sleep. Um, I love what Lindsay said, trying to make sure your kids appreciate the values of the holiday versus just getting gifts. And we live in a very material world, and it's just definitely such a challenge. Um, I love the hint of minted no addressing. That's lovely for Christmas cards. Um, there can be, um, for people who have younger kids in school, the challenge of balancing work with your kids home from school. That's a big one for me. Um, and just financial stress can also be an issue. Um, so just keep it going with the comments. I love that. Overtired, fussy me. That is very, very common. <laughs> We're trying to fit a whole lot more into life, um, into the same amount of hours in the day. And what often gets kicked to the wayside is self-care. And I will say as a yoga teacher, I find that that is the month that my students are not in class. And it's actually the time of year that they need to be there the most. <laughs> um, so it is one thing that uh, we all need to do is really just work hard on making sure that we stick to our schedules as much as we can. Being uh, watching what you eat at holiday gatherings, that's a really good one. Making sure that you're eating nutritious food. Um, drinking enough water, maybe taking it a little easy on the alcohol, even though it's fun, just remembering how you want to feel the next day. <laughs> All of those things. Um, another thing can be the social schedules. I don't know um, how many parties all of you are going to in the next few weeks, but there are usually a whole lot more things to do, um, especially kids' concerts, buying gifts for your in-laws, I see. That's a big one. <laughs> buying gifts for anybody really can be really challenging. Um, thinking about the perfect gift can be uh, something that de we devote a lot of energy to from our hearts, you know, from a really real, authentic place of wanting to connect. Um, but it can cause a whole lot of stress. Um, sometimes I think it's really a good idea to think about just you know, what would they appreciate that wouldn't take me a week to figure out, you know? Um, how could I show appreciation? There, there are so many ways to do that now. Um, being away from friends and family, 
Yes. I totally get that. When I lived in Portland, Oregon, my whole family was on the East Coast or abroad. Um, and the holidays during those years were much different um, from the way that they are now. But there are some that would say being with the family yes. is stressful. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> Um, is anybody, I'd be curious to hear this time of year, um, especially in this year, um, whether there is just stress about being around family members who maybe don't see eye to eye with you on the issues of the day. Um, that can be challenging. I love, Lindsay, that your um, solution is to adopt a new family. I also think really um, when we're faced with the difference between our expectation of what the holiday should be versus what the reality is in our life just because of our circumstances and where we live and who we're with, it's a really great idea to think of new traditions. It's a really great idea to think about who you could bring into your circle um, that would help you really enjoy that time and be giving back to somebody else as well. Um, my first holiday when I was divorced, I invited a group of women who I also knew were going through the same thing to share some time together, and that was really rewarding and felt very connected um, and very true to where I was in the moment instead of trying to create something that was different. Yeah, so, well, that's really good. Those are all really good things to think about. Um, so what I'd like right now is for you to take out a piece of paper and draw a line down the center of the page so that you're dividing it to the right and the left of the page. Um, and Sally has an example up there on the slide. Um, and on the left side, write stressors. And we've had a couple of moments to discuss what are some big stressors, but I want you to really think deeply and reflect for yourself about what, what the really major ones are for you. Um, and go deep. You know, where do they stem from? What is it that is causing you to feel that anxiety or um, just just busyness or whatever um, feelings you'd like to rise above and just just be specific about what those things are just take a couple of moments to do that for yourself and this is really the start of mindfulness of being really aware without any judgment of how you're feeling right now Because we can tend to move through life with a very generalized feeling of anxiety or overwhelm, but it isn't until we really name it, name what is causing it, um, give ourselves the space and respect to look at it, that we can begin to work with it productively. So now that we've taken a moment or two to really get clear about that, set your paper and your pen down, and we're going to take some time to do a meditation together that will just bring you into a place of even deeper relaxation than we did in the beginning and give you an opportunity to start visualizing for yourself um, how you want to feel. So once again, make yourself very comfortable in your chair <clears throat> and sit comfortably so that your back is supported. Maybe you have your feet on the floor or it might feel better to have your feet up. Just take whatever is your most comfortable sitting position. And for a moment, just scan your spine and your mind and try to make it as long as possible and relax as much as possible and just let your body sink and shift and move if you need to to let your body settle deeper into the chair and then just close your eyes and return to that awareness of the breath that we practiced a few minutes ago just being aware of the inhale as you breathe in through your nose and the exhale as you breathe out through your nose. And just let each exhale sink you down a little further into feeling grounded and supported. 
And just be comforted that at this time, everything is okay. Nothing else matters right now in this moment. And you're here to simply feel your body and listen. And there's nowhere else to go, nothing to do, but just to be here and simply listen without trying too hard. You're in a safe environment, protected space held space. Just come into stillness now and remain still for deep rest, deep nourishment. Feel your natural breath, the breath flowing through you and allow your bones to become heavy. Feel your bones heavy and sinking into your chair. Release your bones, heavy and sinking. Now just allow your awareness to travel through your body and feel each body part as I mention it, without moving, just remaining still. <clears throat> Welcome all sensation just as it is. Begin with your mouth. Feel your mouth. Feel all the sensation in your mouth, your jaw, your lips, the inside of your mouth, the roof, your tongue, your teeth. Notice the sense of taste in your mouth. Feel your left inner cheek and your right inner cheek. And now feel all the parts of your mouth together as a whole. Feel your mouth as sensation, as energy. And now feel your nose. Notice your nostrils. Feel the breath in the nose through the nasal passages and follow your nasal passages all the way back into your head. Now become aware of your ears, your right ear, your left ear, both ears together. Follow the ear canals back into the inner ear and notice how your ears are receiving sound and listening. Feel your ears hearing. Now feel your eyes, your left eye, your right, both eyes together. <clears throat> Notice your eyelids, notice where they touch, and become aware of the surface of your eyes, the centers of the eyes and the backs of the eyes. And now feel your eyes as energy, as radiant, glowing embers. Now bring awareness to the crown of your head, down over your forehead, smoothly down over your face. Feel your whole head and feel your neck, back of the neck, the sides of the neck, and your throat. Notice the right palm of your hand and all of your fingers. Feel your whole hand alive with energy and then moving to your wrist, your right forearm, your elbow, upper arm, up to your whole shoulder. Notice the notch at the base of your throat. And then notice your left palm, your thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. Feel your whole hand alive and filled with sensation. Move up to your wrist, and your forearm, your elbow, upper arm and your shoulder and notice the notch at the base of the throat. And then become aware of your chest, your upper back, your shoulder blades and feel the center of your heart. Move your awareness down your abdomen, through your ribs, 
through your solar plexus. Feel your belly, your navel, your hips. Feel down through both thighs, both knees, your lower legs, your ankles, the right foot, toes, sole of the foot, whole foot, and then your left foot, toes, sole of the foot, and whole foot. And now feel the sitting bones resting on your chair. Bring awareness of your whole back body resting against the chair as sensation, alive, vibrating. And now feel your front body just filled with radiant vibration. And pour your awareness like liquid into the right side of your body, feeling the whole right side. And then pour your awareness into the left side and feel the left side of you. Feel your midline. Feel your body as a whole. A complete entity with sensation throughout the whole body. And then return your attention back to your breath, the natural breath in through your nose and out through your nose. As you inhale, a fresh wave flows upward through your whole body, bringing a sense of calm. And as you exhale, the wave flows downward and carries away stress and fear. And now go deep inside. Go deep inside to notice your heart's deepest longing for this season. And what does your heart desire? How do you want to feel during this season of your life? Feel really free now to visualize the holidays and what makes this time of year most meaningful to you. What do you look forward to? What brings you the most joy? What makes you feel the most connected? What makes the holidays feel good to you? Is it the quiet of midwinter? The long, lovely evenings at home? Or is it the bustle of social engagement? Is it the giving? Or maybe it's a ritual that you've kept for many years. Or there may be something that you'd love to do but never have. So be really free here to envision and allow yourself to feel it unfold. Create for yourself an intention now that's just based on this feeling, a positive statement, as though it's already happening. So for example, rather than saying, I will be relaxed, or I will not be stressed out, you can state with feeling something like, I flow through life with ease and peace. I am relaxed. But whatever it is, state it to yourself three times as though it's already happening. Say it as though it's happening in the present moment. Inhale it into your body and let it fill every cell. Inhale it in again and again. And so now notice your back body resting against your chair again and feel all the places where you make contact with that support. Notice the front of your body. Notice all of the space around you. Let your body expand into that space and notice your breath. Feel the breath and its rhythm. Before moving, just sense your fingers and imagine them moving and then begin to wiggle them, feeling every sensation as you do. And then notice your toes and begin to wiggle your toes. Just gently rock your head from side to side. Lengthen your spine and take a full breath in and a full breath out. 
And ever so slowly now, just allow your eyes to open to a soft gaze, just taking in the light of the room. So I hope that felt good. I hope you're all feeling really centered and relaxed. This is a guided meditation is a really um, wonderful gift to give yourself. And as you can see, it only takes a few minutes. There are lots of audio resources for that. Um, and so now I'd like you to return back to that piece of paper that you had where you had written the stressors down one side. And on the other side, I want you to just write down for yourself what the things were that came up for you that you'd like to create. And share it in the chat window if you're so inclined so that we can all talk about it. Just take a few moments to do that. And be really free. And just imagine that you have all the time in the world to create what it is that you want to feel and to be to have at this time of year. And again, if you feel like you'd like to share in the discussion and talk about those sorts of things, that would be awesome to get to share together. And once you have that, So I'll share that, um, oh, I see, stopping and taking time to really notice the detail of the decorations. That's beautiful. That is one of my favorite things, too, um, to really just appreciate the beauty of the season, to be able to have the time to just be that present that you take that in. It's wonderful. That's awesome. Um, one of the things that I like to do is to invite the single people in my life over for drinks and to bring their kids if they're single parents. That's always a really fun thing for me during the holiday season. And I see for Sarah, it's all about doing things in a pace that works for me. That is so true. Thinking about the pace of life is very important. Not feeling rushed, just really enjoying where you are. So the deal is that in order to say yes to what it is that we want to feel and do and be, we're likely going to have to let at least one thing go. <laughs> and I always talk about that as being the dance of yes and no. In order to say a really full yes to the things that you want to create, we have to learn to say the word no. And for many of us, that's a really hard word. That's a difficult word for me. Um, and it was for many years. Um, I will share that we um, somebody had brought up Christmas cards earlier, and that is for me the big thing that I've let go of in the past couple of years. I love sending Christmas cards. It's been something I've done forever, but I've noticed that I was sending them to people who have seen my pictures all year long on Facebook, and so it almost seemed like it became redundant to me. And so for me, it became um, something that giving up gave me a lot more time to do the other things that were more meaningful. Um, and that I can still stay connected with everybody I wanted to be connected to. And that's just me. Um, that's just one example. But what I want you to do now is um, down below on the right side of the page, the things that you wrote that were um, supportive of creating the happiest holiday that you want to be able to have, I also want you to write down the things that you need to let go of. Um, and it may just be one thing. It may be, you know, one or two. Like Perfectionism. What? Perfectionism. <laughs> That's a tall order. <laughs> but it's you just know, one thing. Right. <laughs> Maybe perfectionism in your decorations yes. or perfectionism in your gift giving or whatever that is. You might think about um, what could you let go of? Because the reality is we all have the same 24 hours in every day and we all have um, limits to our resources. And in order to protect 
with love from a very deep place inside of us, the things that are the most meaningful and important, we do have to let go of one or two things that are not as meaningful. Um, feel free to share in your chat window if there's anything that you've let go of um, that has helped you to then focus on what's most important to you. It may not be the cards, maybe something totally different. Um, I'd love to know because I could probably cross one more thing off of my list this year and make my life a little easier. Um, and I agree with Sarah and what she said, it's just all about the pace, you know, being able to move through life at a pace that feels elf on the shelf. That's a good one. <laughs> And I will say that I was, um, as a mom of a young one, I was not an elf on the shelf perfectionist. I would move him around, but I didn't do the whole, it has become such a huge thing to be so creative. You know, there are things that we can let go. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, So we're going to move on to the next slide, which is um, tips that we can follow to just avoid being overwhelmed. I see Sarah, I cook less food. That's wonderful. I like that. That's very conscious and mindful. It's one of those examples of making a really mindful choice, um, being able to still enjoy what it is that you want to enjoy, but just to be clear that it doesn't have to all be all at once all the time. Um, so there are some tips besides just letting go um, for avoiding holiday stress because the reality is we can't let go of everything. We do have to do some of the things that are um, important just for this time of year, but also in our lives. Um, so sticking to your normal routines as much as you can. Getting enough sleep, I cannot say enough about that. Um, studies have shown that people are so much more vulnerable to getting colds and respiratory infections when they're getting less than seven hours of sleep a night. And that's not to add another stressor, um, but simply to treat yourself with a lot of nurturing care. Um, take time for yourself. Recognize whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. And if you're one of those people who need some time alone to recharge after social events, give yourself that. Um, eating and drinking in moderation, taking care of how much you consume and what you're consuming, um, trying to get exercise works on so many levels, both just releasing stress that's held in the body, um, staying fit and healthy, and also just relieving um, stress and having endorphins. Um, keep things simple. That is one of the key things, I think, is just not getting caught up in this whirlwind of high expectations, but doing what is meaningful and making choices that winnow out the things that are not. Um, reasonable expectations and goals, setting a budget, not overextending. I will share that um, one year when my uh, former husband and I were in graduate school and we had very little funds, we decided that we would give each other five presents each and none of them could be more than $5. And that was probably the most meaningful Christmas gift exchange we ever had, you know? Um, so it's not necessary to overextend. It's a, one of the biggest stressors can be that. Um, listen to music or find other ways to relax. That's where some of these breathing exercises come in that we've just done. Um, we're going to work on another one in a moment. I will also share that um, I have a, on Pandora a station that I really like of Indian flute music. And I just put that on in my house, and it keeps me so chilled out. So there are just lots of those external ways that we can just use to stay relaxed and stay on an even keel. Um, but once again, just the mindfulness, um, not being judgmental of yourself, making choices that support your highest. Okay. So one of the practices that I find the most helpful to use when I'm feeling very stressed um, is called the 478 breath, and I'm going to teach you guys that today. It doesn't take very long to learn. Um, it is something that it's really important to practice um, because when you are in the middle of complete meltdown, <laughs> is not the time to try to learn this breath. <laughs> so it's definitely something that if you will practice it a few times a day, you can even set a timer on your phone to remind you just to take literally two minutes out of the day and practice this breath, it will have to go a long way toward keeping your nervous system soothed and your body calmed down and your mind clear. 
Um, so to do the four, seven, eight breath, it's very simple. And this is on this graphic right here that you're looking at. You just inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of seven, exhale for a count of eight. And there are a couple of remind, refinements that we'll go through in just a moment. But I want to be clear that the ratio of the breath is the most important thing. And so if you feel like it is too long for you to hold the breath for seven seconds and exhale for eight, then just speed up your counts so that you're still inhaling for four, holding for seven, exhaling for eight. They can be as fast as they need to for you um, so that you can work through this breath. And know that just like anything else that you might do physically, breathing actually takes muscles um, that take development. And so don't be discouraged if this is difficult to do at first. Um, so I just want to give you that little pep talk and encourage you to practice this. This is a really, really powerful tool um, that's very, very simple. It was developed by Dr. Andrew Weil, um, who you may have heard of as a, a leader in the alternative medicine movement. Um, so let's just, once again, get comfortable in your seat so that your spine can be long and you can breathe freely. That's really the most important thing. You can do this in your car. You can do it at your desk. You can do it at the kitchen table. Um, really any time that you want. And then just place the tip of your tongue right against the ridge of tissue that's just behind your upper front teeth. And be relaxed about it. Just place it there without being tense about it. Just let it sit. And you'll be exhaling through your mouth around your tongue. So you may end up making kind of a whoosh sound around the tongue as you exhale, which is normal. So exhale all the way out through your mouth, making a whoosh sound. And then close your mouth and inhale quietly through your nose for four counts. And then hold your breath for seven counts without tensing your face, staying relaxed. And then exhale completely through your mouth for a count of eight. And that was one breath. So then repeat it again. Inhale again for four. Hold the breath for a count of seven, and exhale for a count of eight. And let's do that two more times together, just on your own counting. If it feels like it's hard to hold the breath, remember to just speed up your counts so that you're staying with that same ratio. And once you've finished those last two times, then just return to a natural breath again. Remove your tongue from its position and just feel the breath and feel how your body feels. This breath was developed based on yogic breathing exercises, and it has been shown to actually shift your nervous system from a state of stress and activation to a state of calm awareness. So it's a really, really... Um, easy thing to do for yourself. And on our resource slide, which we'll have at the end, I have an app that you can go to and that you can put onto your phone and just be talked through that breath anytime you want. Um, so now take your page and just turn it over. And on the back of the page, I want you to just reflect for a moment and write a short phrase, like a mantra that you can repeat to yourself that just keeps you on track through these next couple of weeks um, that reminds you of what your highest and most meaningful holiday tradition or activity is and how it is that you would like to feel and what it is that you would like to be present for. Um, and just make it very short and sweet. The shorter and the sweeter, the better, because it's easy to just repeat to yourself. And I like to sometimes write it on my hand or put it as a reminder on my phone so that it dings at me and reminds me of um, my intention. You've given yourself a lot of uh, really wonderful presence today, concentrated time focusing on this. And so I want you to walk away feeling like you've got some tools in your toolbox and um, just a really focused commitment to your own intention whatever that may be. You can feel free to share that if you'd like, um, but definitely hold it for yourself and um, maybe engineer a couple of ways that you can keep reminding yourself that. 
And then I'll just open it to any questions that you might have, any things you want to talk through, any strategies um, that you might need. It would be helpful if you need to write down any strategies, like things you're going to say yes to or things you're going to say no to or how you're actually going to do that. Um, that would be helpful, too, to be really focused on the how of all of it. And I'd love to hear those. I'll share that my strategy with the Christmas cards has been that I decided if I wasn't going to send cards, I would at least send a letter to my mother-in-law and or my ex-mother-in-law <laughs> and to a few other people who aren't on Facebook so that I would feel like I was still connected to them, but that I would let it all the rest of it go. And that was my strategy to feel good about saying no to it. Very nice. I will not work in the evenings for the month of December. That's excellent. To be able to hold a boundary around your evenings at home, if that's a possibility for you, um, to make that choice, if it's available to you, is a really wonderful way to serve yourself and your family. That's saying no. That is saying no. It is. There you go. Do you have anything you want to say no to, Sally? <laughs> <laughs> Still working on it. <laughs> no is a difficult word for many. Yes. It really is. It's funny. My mother and I talk about that a lot. Um, it is helpful for me to go back and remember in my memories of these perfect holidays that I think that I had in my youth that my mother was always frazzled and exhausted during them and that that's not how I want to be. Um, and I really want to be present for my son when he's with me. And I really want to be present with my friends. And so that makes it easier for me to say no. Um, and just remember that purpose. I, I have <clears throat> um, been, you know, with the big family type thing. And I, I try and, and step back and just observe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that usually gets me out of the activity mm -hmm. and into a place that just says, okay, that's fine. I'm just going <laughs> to sit here and... You know, just watch and mm -hmm. not get too involved or too stressed out about it. Yeah, give yourself permission to not be caught up yeah. in drama, especially yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you have family drama. <laughs> That's really important. So while um, we've got some more typing going on in the chat, we've got also a slide up here with resources. Um, there's an excellent article in the Washington Post um, that quotes Tara Brock, who is a meditation teacher who's just wonderful. She's got podcasts online. Um, and she has some really impressive advice for making a meditation practice in this time of year. Um, there is also an article on Dr. Weil's website about the 478 breath if you want to read any further into it. There's an app that you can download um, on iTunes, but it's also available for other platforms as well. Um, I just have that link there. And then if you want to read further, there are two books that I really loved um, during my time of teaching and coming out of being a busy, overstressed person. Um, one is Thrive by Ariana Huffington, who I heard has spoken to you all, um, and also Meditation for the Love of It. If you're intrigued or curious about developing a meditation practice, that would be my go-to text that I recommend to people. So no cards this year. Email cards. Very good. I love that. And the breath rock picture. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, Teresa, I'll get it to you. I'll let Sally do that. <laughs> All right. So mm -hmm. any uh, any parting <clears throat> questions from, uh, from the chat? Let's see. Um, so thank you, Sari. I know mm -hmm. I know this was really um, relaxing for me, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> but, so I, but I get to do this with you all the time. <laughs> um, I hope everyone out there uh, also enjoyed um, Sari's uh, not only the breathing exercises, but some of the points that she brings out about how we can try and simplify and how we can try and acknowledge the things that are in our lives that are urgent but not necessarily important mm -hmm. and how to how to say no so um good <laughs> wonderful um, before we sign off i do want to thank you all for joining and let you know that um january 10th is our next uh webinar and the woman that's going to be speaking her name is brenda robinson and she is um an amazing woman she is the first african-american female navy pilot mm. so um just an incredible story um she's got a, a program now where she teaches aviation 
to students, to kids. Um, and her whole approach is success as an attitude. And I think that coming on the heels of starting um, a new year and kind of a new attitude, um, I think you'll find her presentation extremely compelling. And then um, uh, Margie, Margie Worrell will follow up in February. We'll get you that date here shortly. Um, and she's going to be talking about finding your courage, which will also be um, a really great session for everyone. So um, remember that the LinkedIn group is always available to you, and the, we will be posting not only this deck um, and the recording, but the snippets from the Women in Partner Lunch that we had. Oh, it, we just I think we just had the, the deck added, so you can download it. Yep, everyone can download the deck um, so you can get those resources from Sari directly. And we thank you all for joining. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoy being with you. And have a wonderful holiday. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.